welcome to Bloomberg Quint. I'm joined this evening by the Finance Minister of the State of Kerala, Dr. Thomas Isaac, to talk us through what he thinks will be the next steps in this standoff between 10 states and more and the center on the contentious issue of GST compensation. Dr. Isaac, thank you so much for your time. We know that yesterday's GST Council meet did not result in a consensus and that 10 or more states continue to oppose the proposal set out there by the center. What is the road ahead now? You have seven more days before the next meeting. What do you hope will take place in these seven days, sir? Okay. The 10 states position has been that if you look at the whole history of discussion on compensation in the earlier empowered committee, in the GST council, or even the parliament, the union finance minister and revenue secretary have assured again and again that if there is any contingency work, there is one sufficient fund in the GST SES fund, sender would borrow and provide it. Only a simple thing, you extend the, the SES period from five years to a longer term. So it's self-liquidating. So this is the background. And two, uh, sender have many options. For example, they can monetize the debt, borrow from the reserve bank. They can uh, access at better terms. Or uh, three, the capacity to borrow is much higher. In fact, I've read reports the reserve bank would prefer uh, central government to do the borrowing. I don't know the veracity of that, but there have been such reports. Therefore, we have been saying that you should keep your word, you borrow, and uh, lend to the states. Now, if sender, sender is unwilling, then they have put two options for state to borrow. And 20 states have selected option one. My criticism of option one is, okay, it permits states to borrow 1.1 lakh crore rupees. But what about the rest? The compensation dues for the current year would be something like 2.3 lakh crores of rupees. Only part of it would be met from uh, the collection of SES during the current year. So it automatically means that you have to postpone your compensation for the next year. Now that is unfair. So I said in my speech, okay, let's sit and discuss how this should be met. This means additional borrowing of 60,000 rules. That's for the Punjab Minister Manpreet Singh spoke with statistics. Assessing whether the sender borrows 65,000, we can negotiate. You cannot put ultimate. You borrow this or that. Second, therefore, uh, we can negotiate. Or if you're very serious, I guess some part has to be go to the next year. Let's discuss what part should go into the next year. You cannot unilaterally decide this thing. Let's negotiate. But the uh, central government is unwilling to negotiate on this. We are saying either you choose one or you go to two. That's not the deal. Therefore, we said this is your proposal. This one DST Council decision. Let the council take a decision. Now we are opposed to it, therefore we will vote against it. That's a democratic process. And there would be a dispute. Let us refer to a dispute resolution mechanism. The council will continue to function. So we have been very reasonable. I'm saying let us negotiate about the options. 
you don't unilaterally propose the net options. Though our position is that central should borrow and give, I, in my speech, said we can negotiate. This option one of yours is not accepted. So let's sit down and discuss. Suppose we are not able to reach an agreement, then let it be referred to a dispute resolution mechanism. While what is agreed can be given. I even suggested you put 2% additional borrowing given for states, make it unconditional so that uh, states can borrow and meet the current uh, requirement while we continue to negotiate. But central government has been very unaccommodative. So after speaking for eight hours, suddenly the meeting is worn out. The revenue secretary says the agenda is over, the meeting is over, then what have we been discussing? So I said, don't take us for granted. There must be a decision made. There must be a decision made. Um, the proposal is the proposal of central government, not the proposal of the GST council, for which a decision is required, which is at this point, the meeting was postponed to 12. So I would say, if it's in this interim period, there must be bilateral discussions. Not just we meet again in the council. This is not the way council used to function. If there's a serious dispute of like this kind, then a geo will go into it. Some interim arrangement is made uh, till that uh, geo report comes. So these are the possibilities. Without searching for such consensus methods, we are going to have another meeting a week from now. And let's see what center has to say. Uh, Dr. Isaac, it seems quite clear that the center at this point is not inclined to borrow, so that option is off the table. Um, it also seems quite clear from a realistic point of view that any dispute resolution mechanism, given that you know it's not already architected, will take a lot of time uh, to put in place and to be able to throw up some kind of uh, you know a resolution, and states don't have the luxury of time. So, as you pointed out, the middle path seems to be the only option at this point. Can so, you elaborate a little bit on what the mechanics of that middle path will be? The center okay. has given us these numbers to work on, which is the expected mm -hmm. compensation cess collections, uh, compensation sex payment to overall be 3 lakh crores. They expected 65,000 crores to be the collection, therefore a shortfall of 2.35 lakh crores, which they, they had then divided into option one and option two. That 2.35 lakh crore should be shared in what fashion, according to you, so that it's oh, acceptable to this? I, I guess I this is not the common understanding of 10 states. Okay. I'm taking a position saying, okay. let us discuss this. Okay. These are possibilities. Um, so now, but then payment are required for the state. The whole functioning is being uh, stalled. The Bengal minister, Amit Mitro, made a revelation that there are states which have postponed the payment of pensions. There are states which are paying only 50% salaries. Now, mind you, this is taking place in a recession. And therefore, there must be an arrangement of payment. Okay, Sandra is willing to um, um, say, already Sandra has taken two steps. 20,000 crores or rupees, uh, uh, say, the compensation they are distributing immediately. 24,000 crores of undistributed IGST they are distributing. Now, like that, there can be certain interim measures. Meanwhile, we continue the discussion. Option one is not acceptable. Okay. So, let us decide to continue the discussion while certain measures, like the two measures already taken, are taken to ensure that the state's the financial urgent requirements are met. So I said, let us discuss about if there is to be deferment, how much to defer. If it is to borrow, 
let's if there's a wire media between sender and state borrowing three the conditions of borrowing let us remove the conditions that these are things which can be negotiated so if you don't um, exhausting these possibilities if you are pushing with the option one which is not yet a council decision you will have to take a formal decision the council in which case the states will vote against that well there is nothing wrong with that the democratic process that that happen what i would would say is that we cannot resolve this negotiation then the losses the constitution says not the law the constitution says that the dst council may have a point a dispute resolution mechanism so refer to that these are the proposals we are saying okay so uh, it is very unfortunate that the central government doesn't want to have uh, arrive at a solution to meeting they are willing to have meeting for example the last council meeting, not just yesterday's meeting the council before that we discussed for five hours 15 states 15 states said sender should borrow at the end of it suddenly option one and two comes i do remember dr <laughs> isaac speaking to you right after the previous meeting yeah. as well when you had described it uh, so if i understand correctly uh, the center's proposals right now seem to have found support from somewhere between 19 to 21 states and that number would be enough to carry a vote in favor of those proposals how would it work if the gst council would to put the current proposals to vote i mean i know one path you are saying is negotiation but let's assume the negotiation does not yield any middle path then in the next meeting would there be a vote on the proposals and do the 20 or yes. 19 20 states if represent the majority going, if the center is or the other states want option one to be made the decision of council there would definitely be a vote what is wrong with that see take the case of bjp in the empowered committee we have worked out everything regarding the dst structure now the second upa the last minute the, then at the last minute they just stalled it they said right to the state cannot be compromised after having a two years of discussion so and then no decision was made the same party comes back to power all right they want to implement dst fine we cooperated uh, even when we had very serious ideological differences with dst in terms of state rights etc that is standing stand in the way so now here is a problem well take the democratic process Uh, but uh, dr isaac i understand take the democratic process i just want to understand whether the center's proposals have enough states voting in its favor for those proposals then to become the reality well i suspect at that moment in the last uh, half an hour of the last gst council i wonder if there would have been sufficient states there to vote for the center's proposal for the center to get uh, uh, majority the required majority 75% of the votes <laughs> i don't so think so I, 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 isaac because so far we understand that i think um the center had suggested 21 states support the proposals that that's they right but you know uh, the dr Mid- Mid- dr no, no, this morning the various states would have to be present and vote that's the procedure of the gst comes is not how many people intimate to you when a decision made and there is a division it is the ministers who are present and vote but, you but cannot have a representative of state in terms of bureaucrats or you send a letter and by proxy vote no the procedure is laid out but dr isaac isn't there a possibility that in the next gst council meeting enough uh you know state representatives or enough finance ministers chief ministers turn up uh, to ensure that since more than 20 states 
uh, support the center's proposal, the vote is carried through. Um, and that's a not, very good chance. Not good uh, possibility. Surely <laughs> they would have uh, the sufficient support. I'm not saying 21 states, uh, 20 states are not supporting it. So that is the, that's the reality. But at the same time, uh, we want to make a statement, very important statement, a position you have adopted for the last uh, nearly four, four, five, four years, three, uh, four years in the empowered committee, in the GST council, and in the parliament. Assurances that will be given to state are broken for a reason. Tell me, state borrow or center borrow, does it make a difference in the macroeconomic impact? Any weight, you know, say, uh, ranking uh, rating agency, they look at the combined debt to GDP ratio, not just senders debt to debt GDP ratio. Um, fiscal deficit, once again, is a combined fiscal deficit of center and state. So it makes no different whatsoever to the optics. Tell me who that way. Who borrows? So why should you make it a principle here? When, in practical terms, it's much more simpler for the center to borrow. Now states additional borrowing. The borrowing requirement for compensation of each state is going to be so different. Kerala may require additional 1% of borrowing. Some other state may require, say, northeastern states, hardly anything, only marginal borrowing. So now you have to tweak the fiscal deficit ceiling to be increased for each state. Why go through all this hassle? Yeah. Uh, let central government take money from monetize this debt and take it and give to states, which states can repay to the trust fund to send it. And they get this money also. <laughs> there can be, there will be no political criticism whatsoever that this debt is being monetized because every political party is represented in the council is saying that. So why tell me the rationale of this standard stand? Uh, Dr. Isaac, I don't represent the center. I am not here to. Uh, no, no, no. no. I, I am asking you. I, 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 I am asking you as a friend. Try to find some reason for this uh, irrational stand that is being taken. I, I, I'm, I'm only trying to understand the outcomes here, sir, as a citizen and a reporter. If in the next meeting uh, there are sufficient votes to carry the center's proposals or to support the center's proposals, what will states like Kerala or West Bengal or Punjab oh, that is so far makes, opposed these proposals do? The council makes a decision that this is the thing. Well, then. We are bound by consent decision, but then we will say there is a dispute. So put up a dispute resolution mechanism. But we will bind ourselves. We are bound by the council decision. That's my understanding. So uh, then we will follow that. But still, we'll have a dispute. We will argue, set up a uh, dispute resolution mechanism. If not in the next DST council, the council after that. And if no dispute resolution mechanism is set up, then the option would be to go to the Supreme Court while complying with the decision of the council. Uh, effectively, sir, any dispute resolution mechanism or even moving uh, the Supreme Court uh, will mean an outcome that will take a lot of time and will not immediately meet the needs of states like yours. So, till so that practically time. speaking, so practically speaking, the best chance at this point in time is if states like yours are able to negotiate an option three as opposed to option one or option two, yeah. uh, which is on the lines of what you've already described. That's what you hope to be doing for the next seven days and option three. And if you that see, doesn't see. work, then the council vote prevails. Is that correct? Somebody has to call to talk. My position that I am willing to negotiate, Kerala is willing to negotiate, has been printed and distributed to everybody. I think the press also must tell the same thing. So open position. I'm saying we are willing to talk. Uh, let's sit down and talk. Uh, form a GOM and let's talk. Interim measures. You have adopted two interim measures. Adopt some more. 
or take a decision of the council which is bind to us and we'll bind ourselves to that but then we'll continue to uh, demand i know you're saying it will take time fine let us take time meanwhile we are bound by the decision of the council that's it and so this is the way democratic process should work why you say why should anybody be upset about that? all right sir i understand that so um there is hope that maybe negotiations of the course of the next 7 days might yield a better more acceptable option 3 uh, for states like yours and maybe the other states uh, for instance the finance minister it, it, not, also... what, I, what i'm saying is not option 3 option 3 is send a borrow and give now we can be a fourth option that's what i'm saying four. all right i stand corrected option 4 i think the finance minister of punjab is also told room but point that they are hopeful of a middle path of sorts and if you know if none of that works then i suppose in the next uh, gst council meeting we will see this matter put to vote and majority will prevail okay thank you I so much dr it. isaac you got it <laughs> thank you Th thank you so much dr isaac uh, all the best with option 3 and 4 and thank you for speaking <laughs> to us here at bloomberg queen sir